Welcome to my beginning watercolor tip number nine, working with liquid and adhesive masking, part one. In this video, I'll discuss the materials and methods that I use when I decide to include masking in my painting process. In part two, I'll do a watercolor study where I'll use the various methods I discuss in this video, part one. Masking fluid is a common method for preserving the white of your paper. I use masking fluid when I feel that it's the most efficient way for me to produce the result that I'm after. There's also certain effects or textures that it's hard to get any other way. Like any other technique or effect, you don't want to get carried away with it and only use it when it's the appropriate method to include in your process. While I do use masking fluid, there are plenty of times where I uh, decide just to paint around my whites and I don't use any masking fluid at all. This image shows the, the tools and materials that I use when I mask. This that I'm holding in my hand is a fine line masking pen and it has a fine tip and can deliver a, a very fine line of masking fluid. This plastic bottle does the same thing. However, I purchase it as, as an empty bottle and fill it myself. I find it much more economical. So I buy a large bottle like this and I fill the plastic bottle from it. This is a color shaper. It has a rubber tip at one end and a brush at the other. For the most part, I use the rubber tip end and it's good for spreading uh, the masking fluid or writing with the masking fluid. I also use a toothbrush to get a splatter effect with the masking fluid. I dip it in the bottle and just splatter it. I'll use masking tape at times to, to tape off an area and paint around it. And then I use clear packaging tape and this goes down on the paper and then you cut around the shape with a sharp knife and it acts as a frisket but it's much more economical than using frisket paper but you need to test it on the, the working surface that you're that you're using to make sure that it comes up without damaging your your surface so i'm going to begin uh, using this fine line masking pen it comes already filled it has a very fine point and it has a bluish tint so that it's easy to see where you put it down and you can see that it it puts down a very fine line and when it dries it'll resist the watercolor until it until you lift it off the the surface of the paper next i'm using this plastic squeeze bottle it also has a fine tip not quite as fine but still pretty fine and you can get a similar result using this bottle the advantage is that you buy the empty bottle and then you fill it yourself with uh, from a jar of masking fluid and it's much more economical um, to use in this manner and if you do a lot of masking it can get quite expensive so uh, it's a good option if you want to try and save some money Now I'm taking my jar of masking fluid and I'm dipping the rubber tip of this color shaper in it and I can make marks on the paper and write almost like a, a pen or a marker or I guess like a brush. The advantage is it's very easy to clean over a brush. The, the brush you need to add some soapy water and make sure you rinse it out good when you're done but this rubber shaper you can just uh, once the, the rubber, once the masking fluid dries on it, you just rub it off with your fingers and it's completely clean. So this um, doesn't give the fine line that you get with the squeeze bottles, but you can still uh, write with it. And these come in different shapes, these different tips, and you can get different effects with them. I have this one that's at an angle that I use, and actually I'm writing my initials there, and you'll see when I put paint over it, you'll see that come through. But it's a good way to uh, put down uh, areas of masking fluid. And I'm using the brush end. I really don't do a lot with brush because I, I just find it's a nuisance to try and keep clean. But it applies just like paint. And again, it's best off if you apply soapy water to the brush before you dip it in and it'll clean up easier. Now I'm going to dip a toothbrush in the jar of masking fluid and I'm just going to take my finger and splatter it on the paper 
and this gives a nice texture quality uh, in a lot of different uh, applications. It's good for snow, it's good for foliage and trees or spray of water. It, it's just a nice effect. Here I have some masking tape. I'm just going to put some masking tape down and um, I use this sometimes. I'll do some florals where I'll have some geometrics and I'll tape off some square shapes and I'll use a dry brush over top or um, around it, a shape that I'll put down. And then when I lift it up, it's, it has a white of paper and then I have all my brush strokes that uh, I applied around it. I'm going to take a pencil. I'm going to draw a few rock shapes and a tree. And then I'm going to show you how I use clear packing tape to create a frisket. And I normally use this when I want to cover large areas um, of the composition. I, I, it gets kind of uh, tough to use masking fluid if you're doing a large area. It, it affects the paper and it's quite expensive because masking fluid isn't that cheap. So this is a good solution. It's also uh, cheaper than frisket paper. But you want to make sure that you test it on uh, the paper that you're working on or your board and the combination of the tape you have and the paper just to make sure it doesn't damage it. I really don't have much problem when I use this and I work on 140 pound cold press. Every now and then it'll take a little bit of a nap up but for the most part I don't have uh, much problem with it at all. So once I put the tape down I, I press it down lightly then I come in with a sharp knife and I go around the area that I want to protect and once I've cut it uh, around the shape then I lift out the surrounding tape and it leaves the the area that I've drawn protected. It can work in reverse too if you are trying to protect the area, area around the outside of the shape while you work on the inside you can just take off uh, take out the inside shapes. So it just depends on which area you're trying to protect but the process is the same. And as you're you're working with your knife obviously you don't want to put a lot of pressure on it because you don't want to cut deep into the paper you, know, you might get a few marks in there but really it's if you're careful it really doesn't affect it too much so once I've done that I take my uh, edge of my knife underneath the tape and I start peeling it away and um, once I have it all off what will be remaining is the uh, shapes that I wanted to protect with the tape over top of them. As I said, I, I normally use this method when I'm working on larger shapes. In particular, if I'm working on a full sheet watercolor, it's a good way to cover a large area if I'm going to be working with a large wash and I don't want it in a particular area. I'm going to apply a wash over top of this and the first one is where I put the masking fluid with the fine line uh, masking pen. The second one is where I've used the bottle that I filled myself. And you can see it looks very similar to the one where I used the prepackaged uh, masking fluid pen. The next one is going to be where I uh, spread the masking fluid around with the uh, rubber tip of the color shaper. And I just made some shapes but I also put my initials there. And you can see that coming through. This is where I put down a masking fluid with a brush. And now I'm going to take some paint and I'm just going to go over top of this tape in between the tape and um, it just uh, protects the area wherever the tape is, however you put it. And then you can uh, put a wash over top and it will, it will show after you take the tape, it'll leave the shape of the, the, the tape that you put in there. And now this is the area that I put the packing tape on and cut with a knife and peeled the tape away. I'm using it like a frisket. And you can see those areas have been protected. I've thoroughly dried my paper now. You want to make sure it's completely dry before you try and uh, paint on or remove the masking fluid. And this is a rubber cement pickup eraser or just a masking fluid pickup eraser. I think it has a couple different names, but it's about two inch square. It's made of a crepe rubber and when you just rub it over the surface it removes the masking fluid and it sticks to the uh, eraser and then you just pull it off and throw it in the trash. So you can see where the areas that I've masked uh, the white of the paper is coming through. 
and it's these have all been applied with the different techniques this is the one with the brush and I'm going to remove this um, masking tape here and you'll see that the area protected with the masking tape is the white of the paper so you normally if you're going to use this you're going to be very precise with it and make a shape or protect a certain area but you can see the effect that it gives you and now I'm going to pull off that uh, clear packing tape where I've used it as a frisket and uh, it'll reveal just the, <clears throat> the white of the paper underneath that If you recall, I also splattered some masking fluid with a toothbrush and I didn't put any wash over that. So I'm going to apply a wash over the top of that right now. Get a little darker with it than the other washes. I've dried it and now I'm going to remove the masking fluid with the pickup eraser and you can see the texture that it leaves. Again, this is great for like snowy surfaces or splashing water or it could be foliage in a tree. These are a few of the methods available for masking. These are the methods that I normally use. In part two, I'll do a watercolor study where I'll put these tools for use. I hope you've learned from this video and thank you for watching.